So we're going to pick up today where we left off yesterday, and we're going to continue to solve these rational equations. And the process that we're going to use to solve the rational equations today is going to be exactly the same as what we did yesterday. Um, but we're just going to pick up the complexity a little bit because yesterday, the examples that we were looking at, if you look at the structure, the ones that I asked you to practice, right? These are just the last two. Um, but the, all of the ones that we looked at, you kind of had a rational expression equal to a rational expression. Rational expression equal to a rational expression. They all looked like that. It was like fraction equals fraction. Today, we're going to look at equations where you have more than one term on at least one side of the equation, right? So some of you guys were asking yesterday about cross multiplication. And I talked to how, about how I'm not a huge fan. Um, and I said how, in, you know, if you want to use it in circumstances, that's fine. Um, when we have a situation like this example over here, where you have more than one term on one side of the equation, you can't use cross multiplication. You've got to use this process where we multiply by the LCD. Okay? All right, so let's start out the way we always start out with these types of questions, with anything involving rational expressions, which is to do what? Factor. Okay, what can we factor here? What is factorable? Yeah. Yes, this denominator. Okay, so this, fact, this denominator can factor, there's a GCF of X, so this, oh my, oh, there, it is working. Okay, this is X times X minus four, okay? And this is X minus four. Now, here, I'm just subtracting a one. If you were to think of the one as a fraction, what would the denominator be there? One, yeah, so this is like one over one. Okay, all right, so that's, that's uh, factored. This is just x minus four, and then that denominator is one. Okay, um, let's talk about non-permissibles. What are the non-permissibles here? In one denominator, I've got a factor of x and x minus four. In another denominator, I've got a factor of x minus four and the other denominator I've got a factor of, or I've just got a one. So what are my non-permissibles? Four, yeah, and zero, yeah. So x cannot equal zero or four. Okay, so that's taken care of. And then the next thing that we did was we multiplied the entire equation by the LCD. So let's figure out what that is first. And we always started out with our LCD, and some of you guys will just know what this is by just looking at the denominators. And if you know, then great. But we start out by writing out the first denominator, which is x times x minus 4. Okay, and then we're just going to make sure that we've got all our denominators, the rest of our, the factors of our denominators covered. And if we don't have factors included, we'll add them in. Okay? So the next one is x minus 4. Have I got that factor in my LCD? Yep, and then the other one is one. Do I have a factor of one in my LCD? Yeah, one is a factor of everything. Yeah, so I've got a factor of one. So this is my LCD. It's x times x minus four. Okay, so I am going to write out my equation again. 16 over x times x minus four. I'll write it out in the factored form equals, and I'm going to spread this out quite a bit, 4 over x minus 4. Is that a minus or a plus? It's a minus. Minus 1 over 1. Okay? And I'm going to multiply everything by the LCD. So this guy on the left gets multiplied by x times x minus 4. This gets multiplied by x times x minus 4. 
Ah, my pen's not reacting very well. I apologize for that. And then this gets multiplied by x times x minus 4. So that step's almost mechanical. You're just going to do that without thinking about it. Okay? And now let's cancel what we can. So the idea of this is to cancel factors in the denominators. Okay? So on the left side, what cancels from the denominator? What factors cancel? Both of them. Yeah, everything. The x cancels and the x minus 4 cancels. So these all cancel, and I'm left with 16. Okay. Um, okay. This term over here, the first one on the right side, what factors cancel? What cancels? Yeah. It'll be the x minus 4s. The x minus 4s. Okay, so the x minus 4s cancel. And what's left over? What's left over? 4x, yeah. So x times 4 or 4 x. And then over here in the last one, what's, does anything cancel? No, nothing cancels because the denominator is just 1, right? So I'm left with minus 1 times x or just minus x times x minus 4. Okay, so this is the step where I transform the equation from the rational equation to either the linear or the quadratic equation. And now what I need to do is I need to expand, right? So I've got some sets of brackets here I need to multiply out, collect like terms if I can. Okay, so I'm gonna take that step. So on the left side, I've just got the 16. And then 4x. And then here I'm going to distribute. So minus x times x is minus x squared. And then minus x times minus 4. What does that become? Yeah. Plus 4x. Plus 4x. Yeah. Okay. And now if I sort of collect like terms on the right side, I'm going to get 16 equals negative x squared, and then 4x plus 4x is plus 8x. Okay? All right, so what type of equation am I dealing with in this situation? Quadratic, yeah. Okay, this is a quadratic equation. And so um, what's my next step going to be if it's a quadratic equation? I heard someone say it. Yeah, make one side zero. Okay, and you can choose which side you want to make zero. Um, so you could either subtract 16 from both sides to make the left side zero. You could add x squared and subtract 8x from both sides to make the right side zero. It doesn't actually matter. Um, I have my personal habit. Um, and my personal habit, and I don't know why I do this, but this is just what I do, is personally, I like the x squared term to be positive. So I make the side zero that's going to make the x squared term positive. And I don't know why I started doing that. It was a habit. I think pr probably because I got into the habit of solving by factoring, and I find it easier to factor when the x squared term is positive. But it really doesn't matter, particularly if you're going to use the quadratic formula. Okay? Um, so anyway, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so plus x squared minus 8x. Okay. So my next line is going to be x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals 0. Okay? There we go. 
And some of you that are strong in factoring will be able to see that you can factor this. And I think that's actually, now that I think about it, that's why I do make the x squared term uh, positive. And it's, you can certainly factor with it being negative, but I don't know, that's just old, old habits die. What is it, what's the saying? Old habits die hard? Yeah. Okay. Um, if we were to use the quadratic formula here, though, what would the value of A be? What's A, what's B, and what's C? What is A equal to? One, yeah, and B, negative eight, and C, 16, okay? So when we're solving, okay, our quadratic formula is X equals minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So I always sub brackets in first before I sub numbers. especially when one of my three, one or more of my three values is negative. Okay, and then I can just plunk in my A, Bs, and Cs into the bracket. So the first one is B, so a negative eight goes here, and a negative eight goes here. And then A is one, C is 16, and then over two times one. Okay, and we've always been doing the stuff inside the radical first. So let's maybe do that off to the side. That's called the discriminant, if you remember from last year. So negative eight squared minus four times one times 16. Okay, how much is that? Negative eight squared minus four times one times 16. What is that? Yeah. Zero. Zero. Yes. Because negative eight squared is 64. Negative eight times negative eight is 64. And four times 16 is also 64. Yep. So this is zero. Okay. So what we're going to end up with is negative negative eight, which is just eight plus or minus zero over two. Because the square root of zero is just zero. Right? That means we only have one answer here, which is eight over two, which is, how much is eight over two? X equals four. Okay. Yeah. Good. Excellent. We gotta throw this out because we haven't finished going through the process yet. The last thing we've got to do is go back to the beginning and check our non-permissibles. And x can't equal four. Four is a non-permissible. So at the end of the day, after all of this work, this is extraneous. No solution. Okay. All right. Let's try another one. Let's see if we get something that's not extraneous. Okay. Here's another one. So 
Solve the following equation for x. x over x minus 1 minus 1 over 1 minus x equals 7. Okay? Well, first thing we would have to do here is factor. Is there anything that needs to be factored here? No. Okay, good. So that's nice. Uh, Non-permissibles. the non-permissibles. So we've got this factor in one denominator of x minus 1. What's the non-permissible there? 1. And then I've got another one of 1 minus x. What's the non-permissible there? One minus what equals 0? Yeah, 1. Yeah, it's the same thing, okay? So there's only one non-permissible, it's one. And in fact, that should sort of spark something in our minds. The two denominators have the same non-permissible. So we're gonna have to think about that when we think about our least common denominator, okay? One of these is x minus one, one of them is one minus x, and this is like seven over one, okay? So LCD. Okay, now what do you notice about x minus 1 and 1 minus x? They're negatives of each other. Yeah, yeah. So we actually saw this with addition subtraction before when we were coming up with the least common denominator. And we don't actually have to put these both in our LCD because if we actually multiply one of these by negative one over one, or sorry, negative one over negative one, we will get the other one. So what we can do here is we could, for example, take the second term on the left side and multiply it by negative one over negative one, and we would get the x minus one, for example, okay? Or the other thing that we could do is we could multiply everything by x minus one. If we multiplied everything by x minus one, if we multiplied this by x minus one, the two over one minus x, you can cancel x minus one and one minus x. It just isn't equal to one. If you have an x minus one over one minus x, what is that equal to? It's not equal to one, it's equal to negative one, yeah. Okay, so the LCD is actually x minus 1, okay, because these are negatives of each other. Okay, so there's two things that you could do here. You could multiply this second guy by negative one over negative one so that the denominators are in fact the same. Okay, or you could just multiply the whole thing by x minus one, but then you have to remember that when you cancel x minus one and one minus x, you can't replace it with a one, you have to replace it with a negative one. Okay, now the other thing that I should say is this. If you, instead of writing the LCD as x minus 1, you wrote it as x minus 1 times 1 minus x, okay? Let's say you did that. What would happen is you would be picking a common denominator, but not the least common denominator. And you would still solve the equation. Here's what would happen, though. What would probably happen in this case, I believe, is you would get a quadratic equation instead of a linear equation. And what's gonna happen is because it's quadratic, you're gonna get two answers instead of one, and one of them will be extraneous, okay? Do you guys wanna do it both ways? No? <laughs> the reason why I ask if you wanna do it both ways is because when I have asked a question like this on an assessment before, I see a lot of people who pick the LCD as x minus one times one minus x and end up in that quadratic situation. So that's why I ask if you wanna do it both ways. 
right? You gotta kind of be really slick with your algebra skills if you pick up on the fact that the LCD is in fact x minus one. Yeah. But wouldn't once you get the end of the quadratic, Yes. So if you get to the quadratic, you're gonna end up with the same answer, absolutely. Yes, you will, right? You're just gonna throw out the extraneous solution. Yeah. Right? Okay, so let's say we pick the LCD as x minus 1. One minus x equals 7 over 1. Okay? I think what I'm going to do here is this. I'm going to multiply this guy by negative 1 over negative 1. And then what I'll have is I'll have two denominators that are the same. Minus, and then 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Now if I multiply these two together, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative x is positive x. So this is actually going to become x minus 1 instead of 1 minus x. Does that make sense? Yeah? Equals 7 over 1. I think that's probably the most, most straightforward way of doing it. Okay? Now we can multiply by the LCD, which is x minus 1. Maybe I'll do that in a different color, because why not? Okay. So I'm going to multiply everything by x minus 1. This keeps my equation balanced. And then these cancel, these cancel, and nothing on the right side cancels. Okay. So on the left, what I'm left with From the first term, what's left over? X minus what's left over here? Negative 2 equals here what's left is 7 times X minus 1. Okay, and now we have a linear equation. Right, so we have to do some expansion on the right side, but this is not. This is pretty straightforward to solve. So we're going to have, this becomes an x plus 2 equals, here we can distribute, so this becomes 7x minus 7. Okay, and then maybe I'll collect my x's on the right side this time. So I'll subtract x from both sides that these cancel, and I'm running out of space here, so I'm going to move here. But you guys can keep going underneath. Okay, so on my left side, I just have 2 now. And on my right side, 7x minus x is 6x minus 7. Okay, and then I can collect my numbers on the left. So plus 7 on both sides. And then these... Make zero. So I'm going to have on the left side, 2 plus 7 is 9. And this is 6x. And then I can divide by 6 on both sides. And I end up with x equals 9 over 6, or 3 over 2, simplified. Or with that one, because it's a terminating decimal, you could write it as x equals 1.5 as well. Okay? Now, what do I need to do now that I have an answer? What's a good thing to do at this point? Yep. Yep, 
check your non-permissibles, right? Non-permissible is one. The answer is not one, so this is fine. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there for today. What I'd like you guys to work on uh, for the next little bit is practice questions one, two, and three. Okay, um, and then uh, your homework for today is in the textbook to page 258, numbers one, and then four to six, A, B, D. Okay, and your quiz this Thursday will cover up to this point.